The theme of the day at Eagles training camp on Wednesday at the Novacare Complex, physical football. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside Training Camp, presented by Xfinity, Dave Spadaro and Chris McPherson. And the Eagles got after it on Wednesday morning, an absolutely beautiful day that featured live tackling. They actually brought ball carriers to the ground <laughs> for the first time in an Eagles training camp since 2012. And it was great to see. The fans loved it at the Novacare Complex, and I think the players, particularly the defense, really energized, extremely enthusiastic. A lot of trash talking on the field. The best part, there were two live drills during the practice today. You had the one best one was the at the goal line, a short yard situation, and the defensive line just completely engulfed the offense, dominated the drill, and had barking from both sides of the football. But it just raised the level of intensity here at training camp with the preseason opener just a little over a week away, Dave. Yeah, so fun stuff here as the Eagles ratchet up the intensity here in preparation for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on August 11th. One of the themes we want to explore in this inside training camp presented by Xfinity, the running back situation, which still is without Ryan Matthews. Still without him, he hasn't practiced with that ankle injury. Also, rookie Wendell Smallwood out with a quad injury that will keep him sidelined at least for a couple of days here. So, in the meantime, the Eagles looking at players like Kenyon Barner, and he impressed on this Wednesday. And Head coach Doug Peterson in his post-practice press conference talked about the running back situation and compared it to last year in Kansas City when the Chiefs lost their Pro Bowl running back Jamal Charles, lost the following week, and then reeled off 11 straight victories before losing in round two of the AFC playoffs. Here's Doug Peterson post-practice. You know, yeah, I've, I've, I've pulled from, you know, a little bit from, from how we handled that situation, even in training camp when when we didn't let Jamal take a lot of live snaps, um, you know, we, we got our twos and threes and, and, and our fourth guy really uh, a lot of time. And, and this is valuable time, you know, with, with Ryan uh, hopefully coming back in, in the next couple of days, you know, uh, this is a great time for them. And Wendell not practicing right now, uh, it's great for those guys to get so many reps and so many touches. Uh, it's just going to help the overall balance of the football team and, and uh, put, put some good film on. Uh, you know, on tape for for uh, for a lot of people to see. I thought he handled it well. Um, you know, his conditioning is, is good. It's improving. Um, you know, he he he, he uh, uh, got a little tired towards the end of the practice, but again, that's that's just the nature of the nature of the camp practice. But uh, overall, I thought he uh, I thought he did a good job. This will be a good fil you know good film for him to watch, good practice tape for him to watch. Uh, to be able to make the necessary corrections, but but headed in the right direction. He, he's an explosive guy with the ball in his hands, and and uh, uh, you know, pretty good out of the backfield. You know, as as a receiver, that's one area that he can get he can improve their route running ability. But but uh, I love the fact that anytime you know you put the ball in his hand, he has the ability to uh, to make some big plays for you, and and he's he's shown that here uh, in in the, in the first week of camp. So let's talk about this running back situation, Chris. We are used to watching the Philadelphia Eagles with a lineage of star power in the backfield, a running back that carries the load, LaShawn McCoy, Brian Westbrook, although some of those carries were distributed, Deuce Staley, et cetera, Ricky Waters, all the way, many, many moons here. This is not the picture that we're seeing with the Eagles in 2016. Matthews, when he gets healthy, will be the primary ball carry, but how do you kind of see it playing out? I think you're preparing the other backs to be able to take on increased responsibility if they need be. Look, Ryan Matthews is a veteran. He's been a pro bowl back in the league. He knows how to handle himself. The key with him is can he stay healthy? Very disappointed that Wendell Smallwood is not on the field because this is the time during training camp where you want to see him in those pass protection drills. You want to see how he handles contact because he looks so good in the t-shirts and shorts portion of camp and the OTAs. For a player like Kenyon Barner, look, he impressed last preseason with some big returns on special teams and some big plays on offense, forced his way onto the 53-man roster and got some reps uh, toward the end of the regular season. Now, when you look at what he did this offseason, he bulked up, got much stronger, got that taste of NFL experience. He wants to keep it going. This is a great opportunity to show the coaches that he could be trusted if he needs to be put into a bigger role later on in the year. And now behind him, there are some younger backs, the likes of Cedric O'Neill, who's a bigger back, and Byron Marshall, who is a multi-purpose back. He can catch the ball well in the backfield. You almost don't know if he's really a receiver or a running back out of Oregon. Some young players there, but Kenyon Barr is a guy, Dave, who I'm looking at here to really take advantage of this opportunity. And, of course, Darren Sproles in that mix as well, but maybe not as much 
of a primary ball carrier. Looks to be a running back by committee approach that Peterson will use this year, but that remains to be seen. Of course, Ryan Matthews has to stay healthy. First of all, he has to get back on the field and then stay healthy in the 2016 season. We know that he's got explosive ability, and that's something that this offense really, really looks forward to. So we'll see how the running back situation shakes out as we move through the preseason. On the other side here on Inside Training Camp presented by Xfinity, we are going to talk about the wide receivers. One in particular, Jordan Matthews, a guest after practice. We'll talk to him when we return to Inside Training Camp presented by Xfinity. Have you ever pictured yourself with Eagle season tickets? Well, now you can turn that fantasy into reality. Comcast Sportsnet and the Eagles are giving away a pair of tickets for the entire 2016 season. Every week this summer brings you closer to the dream with a new chance to win these seats. It's easy to enter. Just answer this week's poll question and enter at PhiladelphiaEagles.com slash Philly. Spadero, Chris McPherson with you here at the NovaCare Complex, and we have talked about the wide receiver position. Everybody wonders who will be the go-to receiver in this offense. How about Jordan Matthews, who last year was terrific after a really solid rookie season. Our Alex Smith sat down with Matthews to discuss the offense and his role in it this season. All right, Eagles fans, I'm Alex Smith here at the NovaCare Complex, and I am very pleased to be joined today by wide receiver Jordan Matthews. Uh, Jordan, it's hard to believe already year three for you here in the NFL. What's the mindset for you here coming into this season? Uh, you know, definitely come out here, I'd be a leader every single day for this, uh, not just the wide receiver group, but also this team. Um, but definitely by the way I, you know, come out here and practice every day, uh, the standard that I set for myself. And hopefully, you know, if I'm consistent with that, it also raise the standard of some of the guys around me. Going back to the offseason, you spent some time with Sam Bradford mm -hmm. and Zach Ertz down in Oklahoma. What did you learn about those two guys during that time? Um, you know, the main thing I learned about both of them is, uh, you know, uh, Sam is very, very, very private you know Sam no no social media uh, he lives in the far back of a neighborhood I mean I got to the gate of his neighborhood in the Uber and I was at the gate and his house was still 10 minutes away on the GPS <laughs> I'm like are we in the neighborhood yet you know what I'm saying like, that's crazy and so uh, he, he's very private but it's, it's for a reason you know he likes you know to be out in open space he likes to be close to his family he's got a close-knit uh, camp when it comes to his parents, you know, uh, his his wife and just some of his close friends from Oklahoma. And that's how he likes it. And I think uh, that's something that a lot of people can learn from is being content with being with the with your loved ones and being around those people. And, you know, with Zach, I mean, he's meticulous, man, with the way he works, um, his hours, the hours that he sleeps, uh, what he eats, I mean, is down to a T. And he, you see why he's been able to have such good success, you know, in the NFL, why he's been able to play through uh, full seasons and, um, you know, just just exactly just what the type of person he is, you know, uh, a Stanford guy. And it's like, okay, yeah, I know he's smart, but at the same time, he's also a hard worker too. So you mix the brains with also that type of work ethic, you know, you're always going to have a good uh, – a good person to come out of that, and that's what Zach is. And do you get the Stanford Vanderbilt rivalry going? All the time, all the time. We always, you know, joke about it. Obviously, Stanford is well documented the type of success that they've had. But I always tell him, bro, it's like, dude, it's the Pac-12. They play seven on seven football. He's going, <laughs> he's going to get mad if he hears this. But I tell him, man, no, Vanderbilt's got the hard. I think Vanderbilt has the hardest challenge in all of football in any level because you have the academic standards mm -hmm. of an Ivy League school, but you play in the best conference outside of the AFC and the NFC. So nobody else has to do that. <laughs> nobody. So we compete against the best and the brightest mm -hmm. Monday through Saturday, then and Monday through Friday, and then you got to go play the best in the league, you know, in the SEC on Saturday. No other school has to do that. So Vanderbilt takes the cake with the hardest uh, challenge. So whatever. Going back to Sam Bradford for a second, you were one of the players at the end of last season who really spoke up about wanting him to come mm -hmm. back and, and be here in Philadelphia. So now that he is back here, what's the chemistry like between you two here in camp? It's great. I mean, every every single uh, you know time we're out here, 
uh, where it's a good play or a bad play. I'm always going back and asking Sam what he saw, you know, what he likes, what I need to do better, and really just how I can kind of, you know, improve my game to fit his standard of what he needs to see. The quarterbacks have so much they have to deal with, you know, so I want to make that job as easy as possible on him, and he's been great with that. You know, if he don't like something, he'll be like, Jordan, come on. Like a like almost a disappointed father. So he's like, come here. And then he'll tell me what I got to do. I'm like, all right, got you. Then we go back and we correct it. We'll even come back after practice and hit some reps too just to kind of work on it. So we're still building that chemistry, but at the same time, we're on the same page as like knowing who each other, like knowing each other and building that close relationship. And I tell people that that's important all the time because it's different when the guy who's upset with you because you messed up on a route is just your quarterback. It's different when that person's your friend and you know he's counting on you. So when he says, hey, I need to get you to get to 12 yards in this play, you're getting the 12 yards because that's not just some guy that's just doing his job yelling at you. That's your boy. Mm -hmm. And so that's why those relationships are so important. So I'm just trying to make sure I help him out, you know, as best as possible so he can come out here and have a great season too. I know he deserves it, and that's what I'm going to work for. Let's talk about this wide receivers group for a second. Mm -hmm. um, with yourself, Ruben, Josh, uh, Chris, what do you like about this group, uh, the way that it looks right now? Oh, man, I like how I like how we work, man. I like how focused everybody is. Everybody kind of has something to prove. You know, if you look at the stories of everybody coming into this year, you can always find some area where somebody says, okay, you know, this person needs to go out and prove themselves. You look at Chris, he's gone to a couple teams, missed his chance. You look at Rube, leaving New York, you know, he's got a chip. You know, uh, Josh, he's got something to prove. Nelson, coming off of rookie year, first-round pick, he's got something. And I always feel like I have a chip on my shoulder. So it's one of those things where you have all that in the room, but then the best part about it is, you know, everybody's even kill about it. You don't want to have a whole bunch of egos bouncing across the room and everybody being upset. You want guys to be able to come in, be focused, and be the best person that they can be. And then also not let those things that guys sometimes feel like they have to prove disrupt friendships and chemistry. Yesterday we actually went out to go eat as a wide receiver unit. And I don't think you know how rare that is that on your one off day during camp, guys still want to hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. That's extremely rare. Like, that stuff does not happen in the NFL. Trust me. When you get to the season, okay, maybe. But during camp, your one-off day, guys, the last people guys want to see are people that they see every single day in this locker room. And all the receivers decided that we wanted to go eat together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the rookies aren't paying. All of us sponsored a rookie to take care of their meal. So – that, that's servanthood. That's the type of room you want. That's the type of guys that are going to go out there, and when somebody has a play and guys have to block for them, they're doing it willingly, and they want that guy to do well. When somebody scores, everybody's genuinely happy for them. And that's how you build camaraderie, and that's how you build a team that's actually going to go out there and win games. And my final question for you, what do you want to prove this year? I know you, you've put up really impressive numbers in each of your first two seasons, but what's there to prove for you this season? Oh, man, I, don't, I don't go out there to prove nothing. I just, I just do the work, you know. If a person that – if you go out there and you do the right thing, you know what I'm saying, the right outcome is always going to come about it. You know, to all the all the other stuff, if I if I put a goal, even sometimes you put a certain goal somewhere, then you can mm -hmm. still end up limiting yourself. So it's infinite. I feel like, you know, I have the ability to go out there and have a great season, but if I sit and focus on, you know, the overall outcome, then I can still short myself. So I feel like, no, nah, the main thing I want to do is come out here in every single rep, every single second, Every single day that I can come out here and do something, I'm going to do that to the best of my abilities. That's it. And when we look up at the end of the season, you know, our whole team, especially me individually, I know I'm going to look back and say, okay, this is something I can be proud of. But I just got to go hard every single time I get a chance to. Jordan Matthews, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, good luck with the rest of the camp. No doubt. Appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us right here on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. So where do we see Jordan Matthews this year? More in the slot, some outside, I say – primarily in the slot where he can use that big body and box out and catch a lot of passes. And I believe he will be the go-to wide receiver in the offense in the passing game with Zach Gertz, the tight end, catching a lot of passes. Yes, indeed. Do you see him getting 1,000 yards? I do. I mean, he was really close last year. He's been win. more explosive this year. He's good in this offense. It's more for quick routes, and, but I think Jordan works so hard. And some of these inside defensive backs are small. I think Jordan Matthews is in for a pretty good season. We agree, yeah. very much so. So uh, after this quick break here on Inside Train Camp presented by Xfinity, we'll give you a rundown of what to look forward to tomorrow, including a one-on-one -on -one with the defensive coordinator, Jim Schwartz. You say crazy, I say crafty. You say savage, I say practice. Crazy. Crafted, savage, practiced. Let's run that whole thing back. You 
You say unbelievable, I say achievable. You say incredible, I say inevitable. Unbelievable, achievable, incredible, inevitable. Let's run that whole thing back. Carbs to compete, electrolytes to replenish. Have you ever pictured yourself with Eagle season tickets? Well, now you can turn that fantasy into reality. Comcast Sportsnet and the Eagles are giving away a pair of tickets for the entire 2016 season. Every week this summer brings you closer to the dream with a new chance to win these seats. It's easy to enter. Just answer this week's poll question and enter at philadelphiaeagles.com slash Philly. We're back here at the NovaCare Complex. Dave Spadaro, Chris McPherson, as we get closer to the preseason opener against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chris, what do we have coming up on Thursday here on Inside Training Camp, presented by Xfinity? Well, first and foremost, a recap of what should be another tough physical practice. Doug Pearson loving these hard-hitting training camps, and we'll definitely see more of that action on Thursday. If you miss any of Alex Smith's one-on-one with Jordan Matthews, that will be available Thursday morning on demand. Following practice at around, I'd say, 11 o'clock or so, Sam Bradford will meet the media. We will broadcast live for you here online as well as on our app. And Dave, you had a chance to spend some time with director of high performance Sean Holes, and you're going to take fans inside the sports science That's program, right. something that is carried over to a certain extent from the Chip Kelly era, but you're going to show exactly what it means yeah. to the players and how they've benefited from yeah, it. Yeah, the players speak about it, and they speak glowingly about it in terms of how it's helped correct some of their injuries, their hydration, making their bodies feel right. And Brent Selleck, one of the leading propo proponents of the sports science program, the performance sports science program. Brent Selleck going strong with the new contract and will be a, a key player for the Eagles in this offense. So look forward to that tomorrow. And also 101, this man right here, Dave Spadaro, will welcome Jim Schwartz inside the studio here on Inside Training Camp presented by Xfinity. So it's definitely you don't want to miss the action. Yep. For Chris McPherson, I'm Dave Spadaro. We thank you for joining us. Have yourselves a great Eagles day.